W. E. B. Du Bois, often overlooked in traditional theory courses, provided in his voluminous writings a cornerstone for urban ethnography, race, and immigration. There's a classic in urban ethnography, The Philadelphia Negro, published in 1899, resulted from his fieldwork as part of a research position at the University of Pennsylvania. But his lasting contribution to sociology can be found in Souls of Black Folk, published in 1903. Here we find his eloquent description of the double consciousness that provides a thematic content for theories of racism and racial consciousness up to the present day, a consciousness that results from African Americans as heirs to both the European and African diasporas. The African American, but especially the upwardly mobile and assimilated African American, remains torn between two often opposing worlds. The book, The Soul of Black Folk, opens with a poem and then the following paragraph. Between me and the other world, there is ever an unasked question, unasked by some through feelings of delicacy, by others through the difficulty of rightly framing it. All, nevertheless, flutter around it. They approach me in a half-hesitant sort of way, eye me curiously or compassionately, and then, instead of saying directly, how does it feel to be a problem, they say, I know an excellent colored man in my town, or I fought at Mechanicsville, or do not these southern outrages make your blood boil? At these I smile, or am interested, or reduce the boil to a simmer, as the occasion may require. To the real question, how does it feel to be a problem? I seldom answer a word. A second key idea from the work of Dubois was that of cultivating the, in quotes, talented tenth, an approach to race relations that brought him into direct conflict with Booker T. Washington and later Marcus Garvey, both of whom had radically different ideas regarding how best to make life palatable for African-American men suffering under the Jim Crow system of legalized segregation. His enduring contributions include founding the NAACP and his leadership in the Harlem Renaissance. Charles Lemert, in his brief summary of Dubois, most eloquently quotes and then summarizes the contribution of Dubois to social theory. He was among the first global social theorists of the 20th century, and his concept of double consciousness was framed in global terms. From Dubois, after the Egyptian and the Indian, the Greek and the Roman, the Teuton and the Mongolian, the Negro is sort of a seventh son, born within a veil and gifted with second sight in this American world. From Limert, the double consciousness, while the result of the veil of racial oppression, was also a strength. The Negro's second sight was, at least in part, a gift of being an American, yes, but also being outside the white America, always a Negro, always an African as well. The dogged strength came from an innate sense of the power of the Negro's otherness, as we say today. So this week, we look at Dubois and then Patricia Hill Collins and focus rather extensively in our readings and our thinking on this idea of the double consciousness, the self with one foot and two often conflicting, often opposing worlds.